Marquette in white, Kansas in blue. Good representation in the stands from both programs. And Marquette with the first possession of the game. What a matchup at the point guard position with Dewan Harris, number three, going against Tyler Kolick. And here's Igadaro going head to head against Hunter Dickinson. A look at the starting lineups brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines. We begin with Kansas and KJ Adams Jr. back in the starting lineup, as all Kansas fans know, and I'm sure many college basketball fans know. Adams sadly lost his mother a few days ago. His mommy Vaughn passed away from cancer. He, along with his dad and sister, flew here yesterday and came off the bench in Kansas's win over Shamanad yesterday. Back in the starting lineup today, and, and our thoughts and our hearts go out to KJ Adams and the entire family. The Marquette starting five. David Joplin, sixth man of the year in the Big East a year ago, in the starting lineup this year, and he hit a team high 19 in their two point win over UCLA yesterday. Yeah, David Joplin was huge for Marquette with those 19 points, knocking down five threes. And this is going to be Kansas will switch a lot. But having Kevin McCuller, who's one of the best defenders in the country and a multi-positional defender, there's not a, a spot on the floor, a position on the floor he can't guard. Cam Jones gets a clean look. Tyler Kolick's got an assist, and Marquette's on the board. Uh, it looked like Kansas was trying to switch that, but Marco Jackson got hung up. And you're not going to see a more wide-open shot than that. Jones, the junior from Memphis, 17 and a half points per game. The lead, Marquette. Everything but the finish for K.J. Adams, who can roll to the rim with the best of them, can he? He can roll all the way to the rim, but really good in those short rolls. Cam Jones again! They just got hung up on that screen. He shot behind it. And Cam Jones is called by his coach, Shaka Smart, an offensive savant. He's He gets freedom from Shaka Smart because he can just go crazy out there. Scored 12 points in 22 minutes against UCLA. Fouled out in that game against the Bruins yesterday. And a KU turnover. Jones thought about it. Good closeout by Kevin McCullough Jr. Kohler. So tough. You play him for the pass, he scoops it off the glass. And he can play fast and slow. He slow played that. And if the defense had come more toward him, he would have dumped it off to Iguodaro. Instead, he just finished it with that left hand, and he's left-handed. And some miscommunication between Dickinson and Adams and another Kansas turnover. Well, this is what Marquette likes to do. They want to pressure. And you go underneath, and Harris just got caught going underneath, couldn't get back around, and then doing a great job of slow playing that pick and roll. What do you do if you're Dickinson there? He kind of backed off to get back towards Zigadaro. Well, that's the difficulty yeah. of it. If you stay on the ball for too long and don't recover, but that's why Tyler Kolick, look, pick and roll is the hardest thing to guard in basketball. That's why everybody everybody runs it. But Kolick is special in pick and roll situations. It's a fabulous decision maker. Kevin McCullough Jr., much more assertive offensively in the early going this season and coming on consecutive triple doubles. One against Kentucky in the Champions Classic, another one yesterday against Chaminade. Much more confident this year than last, and he's starting to, to look a lot like Jalen Wilson did last year. A great pass. Stevie Mitchell missed the first, got a second crack at it, and knocked it down. Oso Igadaro kept that alive. He knocked it to a teammate purposefully and just that extra pass to get that open three. Up and down they go. McCuller banks it in. And Marquette's got such a smart team. What a pass. Are you kidding me? Igadaro heading to the free throw line. A behind the back pass, and when Igadaro gets it in the middle of the lane, he's a playmaker in there. Watch Igadaro here underneath the basket, behind McCuller, gives him a bump. And then knocks it out to Kolick. He's got two on one on the back side. And Hunter Dickinson just can't recover. And this is where Iguodaro tends to struggle a little bit. He's not a good free throw shooter. But, but everything else he does. Yeah, he went six for 14 in the game yesterday. He's shooting 46% on the season. The funny thing is two years ago, he shot 74% from the line. But as you say, he does just about everything else well. Marquette is going to pressure everything. Put a little zone pressure on now. They'll get back to 
And it looks like a bit of a 2-3 zone. A 3-2, excuse me. And now they're back to man. Juan Harris to Kevin McCuller. Always lots of ball movement for a Kansas team. A turnaround fadeaway by Hunter Dickinson. Not good. The rebound for McCuller. Harris with a 10-footer. Knocks it down. I thought he might pull the trigger on the three. Remember, he had 23 points in that game against Kentucky. And Kentucky dared him to shoot. And what his feeder said, he's a really good shooter. He just doesn't... He's not an aggressive scorer, but he can score. Iguodaro rejected by Dickinson. And a timeout on the... Understanding that it is a family that they have in Maui. Wonderful gesture by Kansas. They played that exhibition game with Illinois. Uh, Tennessee did the same with the Michigan State. Raising funds to try to help the people of Maui start what is going to be a very lengthy rebuilding process. Jones off the backboard too strong. And back come the Jayhawks down by three. And the Jayhawks have been led by their big four. Bill Self looking for more from five through eight on his roster. This is the biggest of the big four, Hunter Dickinson, but he misses with the right hand. Yeah, Dickinson, McCuller, Harris, and Adams carrying a very heavy load for the number one team in the nation. Kolek. Yes. Are you kidding me? I mean, he's got everything. And tough as nails. Injured his ankle against Ryder and played injured against Illinois at Illinois. Had 24 points in that one. He's just a magnificent point guard. What a great drive. El Marco Jackson with a drive in the dish and the slam for McCullough. Even against an outstanding defensive team in Marquette, Kansas is able to get the ball from side to side. They do not just attack on the first side when the defense is set. They get it to the second and third side. Yeah, you can say it about both these teams. The ball doesn't stick offensively for either one. It does not. And it makes them so much harder to guard. Dickinson has been shooting the three extremely well this year. He's now seven for nine on the young season. What a weapon he is inside and out. He is making the most threes. What another great just pick and roll. Nice little pocket pass, the bounce pass. Igadaro is so difficult to deal with. Anytime he catches it, he can catch and make a play for himself or others. He's one of the best passers on this team. Tyler Cole like the best, but Igadaro not far off. Good pass. Adams a sweet feed to Dickinson to tie the game. And that's not an easy shot. But Hunter Dickinson makes it look easy. Another great pass from Kolick into Iguodaro, and he's fouled. Kolick just finds every passing lane. Gets it through hands. I mean, just makes the drive with that left hand and gets it off the... But Dickinson, he is so confident. And Bill Self puts him in great positions, not just as a trailer there, but he gets he's getting him into the lane, and he's getting... Five or six opportunities a game where he can bury his defensive assignment. Freshman Johnny Furphy checking in. 6'9 out of Melbourne, Australia as K.J. Adams goes to the bench. Furphy, a guy who can really shoot and Bill Self says one of his favorite things about him is you tell him once, he gets it. A very, a very smart player. Well, Cat has made a sub as well. Ben Gold, a sophomore from Wellington, New Zealand. So we've got a guy from Australia, a guy from New Zealand checking into the game at the same time. Well, I was just about to say, Bill, Bill Self likes to tease Johnny Furphy. He, he knows he's from Australia, but he'll say, you're from New Zealand, right? right. <laughs> he was asking him the other day at practice if he had a driver's license. And he says, well, I have one in Australia, but I don't have one here. And I think he was asking him because of his baby face look, whether well, he's old enough to have a driver's license. Godaro out of the game now for Marquette. Pollock, they trap him in the corner. Sean Jones into the game. Sophomore from Columbus, Ohio. Muscles it up and in. Sean Jones is one of the fastest, quickest players in college basketball. He changes the tempo of the game when he comes in. And now he's learning to change speeds. Not just blasting off everything, a little hesitation, and then turns on the Jets. And he's he's only hit two threes this year. I think he's two of nine. 
but he hit a huge one with, what, 38 seconds to go against Illinois, and then the game winner against UCLA. So both yeah. his threes have been huge. And yeah, Marquette barely got past UCLA, 71-69, to in the final points, the final three points of the game, were scored by Sean Jones. No relation to Cam Jones. Over the top, Dickinson. Look how quickly, I know you're a fan of this, look how quickly... The ball goes from his first touch to getting rid of it and getting it up on the glass. Well, he keeps it high, but that was just a little floppy set, and they clear everybody out. Furphy clears out. The defense, Ben Gold, is on the top side. They just throw over the top, so you got to get even more pressure on the passer, Kevin McCuller there. But that's an example of Bill Self really using Hunter Dickinson and using his size. He's always been so good with big guys and getting them opportunities whether they run their two game their high low more recently they've been running four round one trying to get downhill and then get angles for the big guy hunter dickinson is always open it's just a question of the angle of the ball i think uh, you could say without question he was the biggest prize in the transfer portal after three outstanding seasons with michigan and bill self who's had a lot of good big guys in the program says this is the best offensive big guy that he has ever coached well, when you include his scoring, the fact that he can knock down threes and he's a load in the paint, but also he's an excellent passer. So you can play through him. Chase Ross into the game for Marquette, and he somehow finds the bottom of the basket. And Marquette has so many players that can turn the corner on you and get into the lane and draw help. Preseason pick to win the Big East, ranked fourth in the nation. First time they've been ranked top five since 1977-78. A miss by Dickinson, and here comes Cole. And that was the year after Marquette won the national championship with the old Omni in Atlanta. And then Hank Raymond took over for the great Al McGuire. Saved into the backcourt. Cole brings it back over. What a pass. And Ben Gold over the back. Well, that hook pass by Tyler Kolek. He sees the whole floor. He knows where everyone is. He'll turn it over from time to time. But this is not a high turnover Marquette team. They, they usually win the turnover battle. Last year, they didn't, if not the best turnover margin, it was the top five in the country all season long. Iguodaro returns because Gold very quickly picked up a couple of fouls. Ben Gold. Is going to be a really good player, 6'11". He can shoot it. 11 of his 17 made field goals this year in three, so he can stretch you out. Nicholas Timberlake, number 25 for Kansas, grad transfer from Towson. Very good shooter. Has not shot it well in the early going for Kansas, but put, put out the uh, That's a, a rare mistake there by Dewan Harris Jr. as he airmailed that one over the bench. Just a soft blitz. And uh, Phil Self isn't going to get too angry at Dewan Harris. He doesn't make many mistakes. But they're going to see a lot of different looks defensively from this Marquette team. Ball look deflected by Harris, and it's Kansas ball. Adams ahead to Furphy. And out of bounds, back to Marquette. Feels like the absolute next best choice other than being able to be a Maui's to still have it here in the islands, in this case in Honolulu. Well, here in Honolulu, there's been so much work done to make this possible. And Marquette is doing a great job of spreading the floor, and they are getting into the lane. Marquette leading the battle of the paint. And there's another paint opportunity, but wiped away by McCullough. What a great defender. One of the great defenders in the country is Nicholas Timberlake went up there strong and draws the foul. Marquette did everything right, but just a great recovery by McCuller. Cam Jones blows by him, goes to that left hand, and McCuller just wipes it away to start a Kansas break. Timberlake at the line had 13 points in his Kansas debut against UNC Central, but has had only four points total in the last three games, but again, this is a guy who can shoot it, and you talked about five through eight having to step up for this team to be the best it can be. He's in that group of five through eight. Yeah, he, he needs to be one of them. You know who his dad is, right? I do not. Jeff Timberlake, great player from Boston U in the Boston U Hall of Fame, can really shoot it. Kansas, by the way, 0 for 4 from the line right now. Iguodaro with a rebound. 
They can run so much of their offense through their five guy, Nigadaro. He gets it back from Sean Jones and gets the roll. That's pretty basketball. Well, goes with a little handoff and then rolls right to the basket. And that short roll, he caught it, stopped, and shot it. That's really hard for a big guy or for anybody to do. But he does it so well. The color left alone. And a good box out collectively by the Golden Eagles to secure the rebound. Yeah, especially by Igadaro hitting Hunter Dickinson off the glass. Great back door cut. Extra pass into the corner. Good recovery, though, by Furphy. Physical battle with Joplin. And Furphy did all he could, and it was enough to make it a very tough shot. Well, Joplin's stronger, but Furphy held his ground, made him shoot over the top. Furphy baseline. Timberlake in the corner and the rebound to Joplin and those are the shots that Nick Timberlake needs to hit he's a good shooter he made over 233s in his career at Towson backdoor cut two-man game and a bucket for Joplin and Bill Self needs a timeout tournament in Honolulu starts to conclude full court pressure from Marquette They'll give you different looks they can come with a blitz, trap a ball screen. A good pressure out front by Sean Jones. And away from the ball, a big collision as Dickinson hits the deck and Marquette getting called for a foul. Number two, Chase Ross picking up his second foul. And he had some hands on Dickinson. It looked like Dickinson's feet slipped out, or one of his feet slipped out from under him. You know, this Marquette program, one of the great stories in college basketball last year, they were picked ninth in the Big East. They won the league, went 29-7, and seven, were a two-seed, did get knocked out in the second round by Michigan State. But almost everything back, Omax Prosper was drafted. He's now in the NBA, but... Uh, a strong sophomore class day now a strong junior class they've got some upperclassmen they got experience and to me in watching games this year they seem to have as about as much fun as any team i watch when you turn on the tv and see him play a game it's just a great culture chaka smart has built a, a just a magnificent culture at marquette and it's a team that's an energy giving team and they're very very tight group dickinson too strong adams tips it out and the pressure is Giving Kansas some problems. Good to cut. cut. Yeah, McCuller from Dickinson. Well, you turn your head. Kevin McCuller makes such great decisions on both ends of the floor. Talk about a two way player. He's got nine of their 18, but it's still a nine point deficit for Kansas. Stolen away by McCuller. Guess who? All the way right into the chest of Stevie Mitchell, and he finishes. Well, he knew he had Mitchell in a bad spot and just took it right into his chin to finish that play. He is just having an all-America season thus far. Sean Jones, talk about the quickness. He blew by a great defender in Dewan Harris, and one of the best things about Sean Jones this year is he's much more under control. He's changing speeds instead of going a thousand miles an hour, which he can do. It's so difficult to guard a player that goes from slow to fast. He just turned those jets on and got right past DeWan Harris, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. And DeWan Harris is not used to being blown by. And what a rotation they've got. Sean Jones is not a starter on this team, but he can come in for either Cam Jones or Tyler Kolick. Kolick just returned. Cam Jones sat down, but they don't lose much when Sean Jones comes into the game. Dickinson's going to sit, probably for not that long, as Parker Brown checks into the game. A grad transfer from Santa Clara, the older brother of former Jayhawk and current Denver Nugget, Christian Brown. And Parker Brown shooting 70% on this young season. Athletic and big. That, a pass. that was really nicely done. Brown, the recipient, able to avoid the charge. The help defense was there, but he just slipped it. And a beautiful drop-off to the cutting Brown. Joplin. Boy, these are two physical guys, Joplin and Adams. 
Iguodaro with a handoff to Kolek. Seven to shoot. Joplin for three. Mitchell got a hand on it, but it belongs to Harris in Kansas. And McCuller called for a travel. I thought they got oh, a foul. No, they found Shaka Smart has really invested in the chemistry of this team. It feels like the energy is special. How would you describe it being around them? I, I think you said it best. Uh, Miss Special. And Shaka understands that. You know, a lot of credit goes to him and his coaching staff because they tried to build. They're trying to build a, a, a team, a family, and it's not as easy nowadays. The rules are a little different, so it makes it a little complicated to to reach for that all, for everybody to play for each other. But he's built a community, he's built a culture here, and you see these guys out here really giving their all for each other. So it's great. Um, we're excited. I'm glad to go in the locker room and hear them, see the guys, be able to say something to them. Um, this is great. Not to my recollection, you were ever able to play in this Invitational. So when yeah. you're here right now, I know you're a little jealous right now, but jealous. you get to experience this, the best field that this tournament has really been able to put on display. This yeah. is a top five matchup. Would you say as a Hall of Famer that this game is in good hands? No, it is. I mean, the game continues to be. You know, the game continues to go to levels that you can't even imagine. Um, and so it's your job to, you know, set a bar as high as, as possible and allow others to step over it and jump over it. So it's great to come here and see number one versus number four this early in the year uh, competing. But, yes, I am a little jealous we never got to come to Hawaii. It's a lot of things you can be jealous of, but I'm glad that, you know, we were able to do what we did to be able to set the stage for moments that have come after us. And so that's why we can celebrate it together. I thought it was very special, too, for them to take down UCLA for the first time in program history, and you were right there to cheer them on. So they definitely respect the pass as well. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, guys, back to you. Angel, thank you. Great job. So imagine you're playing for Marquette and your coach Shaka Smart says, guys, we got somebody to come in and talk to you. And Dwayne Wade walks through the door. How cool must that be? Incredible. Ooh. That was pretty incredible, too, by Iguodaro. But Shaka Smart and Dwayne Wade, that's a lot of good vibes, don't you think? Well, Shaka Smart, we've talked about the culture that he's built, and it's a it's been a culture of relationships. Watch this block by Iguodaro. You see that. Tyler Kolek able to keep his body in front of Harris. That allowed Iguodaro to recover and wipe that away. But right now, Kansas is having a really difficult time keeping Marquette out of the lane. Harris, and another block by Iguodaro. So many versatile defenders out on the floor for Marquette. They keep great pressure on the ball, and they converge to the ball. Well, that's a big time block by Oso Iguodaro. Well, his versatility doesn't just end on the offensive end. Trying to get Hunter Dickinson. It's a tough angle. He wasn't able to move Iguodaro up the lane enough to free that up. Kolek takes a bump and finishes, and the lead grows to nine. He's just a body seeking point guard. He knows he has an advantage, went right into the chest and knocked back Kevin McCullough. I never asked you for a comp, but do, who does he remind you of? Who does When you see Tyler Kolek, is there somebody who comes to mind? He's got some John Stockton in him. He reminds me a little bit of Scott Skiles when he was at Michigan State with his toughness. Iguodaro getting it done at both ends. It's a double-digit lead. And you can see Marquette is getting deflections. And they have a goal of 32. And if they can get three stops in a row, they call that a kill. Get six in a row, they call it a skunk. I don't know what nine in a row is, I'm afraid to ask. Harris got it back. Shot clock at ten. And a Kansas turnover, and Bill Self is beside himself right now. Well, they are not handling the pressure very well, but you give credit to the pressure that Marquette is putting on, but... Just a really nice job of taking advantage of the advantage that he had in transition. Nigadaro, so good with either hand. Gets into the middle of the lane, and he's such a good passer, you can't really double him. Joplin lost the handle, but found Mitchell. There's a relentless nature of this Marquette team at both ends of the floor. They just keep coming at you. What a pass. Dickinson with about a 70-foot pass to Harris. Jamar McDowell, the freshman from Houston, number 11, into the game for the Jayhawks. He's the ninth man really in the rotation. And that's as deep as they'll go. McDowell doesn't play a ton. He's open here. 
And he knocks down a three. Well, that's a big shot by Jamari McDowell. Three players converged on Hunter Dickinson, and that's the passing ability that we've talked about with Dickinson. Found the open man, and Marquette does not want the ball to come out of a double on the strong side of the floor. Good pass. Trey Norman, a freshman from Boston, missing the three for Marquette. Which way is Harris going to go? He's getting the twist of the screen. It's a pick and pop situation. A good job by Joplin. McDowell with the kick. McCullough in the corner for three. And Hunter Dickinson just went down again. Really did a great job making sure this one didn't get too bad. Back to the action. And the question is, how will these teams react? Joplin over Adams. What a good matchup that is. Adams wins this one. And McDowell, who's given Kansas some good minutes, down with a rebound. And McCullough has been outstanding thus far in the game. And a turnover. Kansas, that's nine turnovers for the Jayhawks thus far. Only three for Marquette. Kansas hanging in there, even though Marquette winning the battle of the paint. It's 22-10 in the paint in favor of Marquette. Five-point lead Marquette, the winner to take on Purdue in the championship game tomorrow. The loser will play Tennessee for third. Bullock, a lefty, whips a, a right-handed pass into the corner, and Cam Jones scores over McCullough. Cam Jones got it in the corner. He's left-handed, and they just left-handed drive into the middle and a really quick shot before the outstanding defender, Kevin McCullough, could recover. Seven-point lead, Golden Eagles. 2.15 to go in the half. Oh, what a battle. Yeah. And Kansas, such a gifted offensive team, but Marquette has made them not look like themselves so far in this game. They're trying to isolate Hunter Dickinson in the low post. There's the duck in. Cross-court McDowell. He's hit one three. Now the step in. Rebound, Sean Jones. What a recovery defensively. Boy, Sean Jones makes you get back on defense quickly, doesn't he? Yeah. This is speed. Yeah. I mean, he goes from 0 to 60 so quickly. I mean, that's one of the best perimeter defenders, guard defenders in the country. And he's got his hands full right now. No question. I mean, staying in front of Sean Jones is a near impossibility. But Chase Ross on that last defensive possession did a great job. He, Left the floor, but still recovered. Cam Jones misses the three. Dickinson down with the rebound, his seventh. Important last minute 30 for Kansas to cut into this lead. Can Marquette stretch it out, or can Kansas cut into it? The switch, but Iguodaro stays in front of Harris. They double Dickinson. Great recovery by Marquette. Sean Jones just stopped that drive. What a stand there by the Golden Eagles. They've got numbers. That's and that is a count. goal 10 and a foul. Boy, Marquette forcing Hunter Dickinson down low on the baseline. A sloppy left-handed pass. And if, if you don't throw a good pass in this game, Marquette's not just deflecting it. They're stealing it. And Jamari McDowell with the foul, and then K.J. Adams compounding it by goaltending there in the basket counts. Chase Ross, the sophomore from Dallas at the line, looking to complete the three-point play. And Shaka Smart calls Chase Ross the most improved player. He's a good defender. He sees things defensively and communicates it. Just a sophomore out of Dallas. Boy, if you're not all that familiar with Marquette, you're getting a pretty heavy dose of what they are. The energy, the togetherness, and how uncomfortable they can make their opponents. They don't have great size, but this team is relentless. 
And it's hard to beat relentless. And McCullough trying to post up Stevie Mitchell. What a what a catch. And he stripped. Bring it down. It's gone. Iguodaro, a little shot put from the elbow, and the rebound down to KU. Sean Jones wanted to try to shoot yeah. the gap there. He just kind of slipped. Harris kept his foot down. Look how hard they're having to work at the offensive end, and another turnover. It has just been turnover central. How about Kansas. a dozen? And most of them have been forced. Now, Bill Self's not going to see it that way. He's going to save date in 2011. Uh, Kansas had a number one seed. VCU barely made the tournament. Goes all the way to the Final Four, beating Kansas in the Elite Eight. Closing seconds of the half. Kolick the kick, and it's out of bounds. Kansas will get a final shot. And you would think that Marquette's going to want to press up and go full court. There is a foul to give here. Mitchell returns. And El Marco Jackson is going to inbound it for Kansas. Will Marquette use that foul? You don't want to give it away. It depends on who gives it sometimes, but Harris gets it off, but misses it, and Kansas held to 28 points in the first half. Don't lie right to your account, but he said the most important adjustment was playing with some poise. He said they're just playing too fast, being sped up. They need to get back to who they are. He said offensively, we need to get our better offensive players, better touches down low. We have to realize where they are and be poised within our offense. The first shot comes from the perimeter. A pretty good look for Dewan Harris Jr., but he can't knock down the three. Cam Jones. He got started quickly at the beginning of the game. He misses a three, but look at Stevie Mitchell going way out of his area to come up with that rebound. David Joplin kept it alive over Dewan Harris. Well, Marco Jackson and a block is called. Kolek just threw his chest into him as he was going baseline. Just you know, stay with him and let him go. That's a needless foul for Kolek to pick up. But you like the aggressiveness, and that's what Shaka Smart wants out of his team is to stay aggressive on the defensive end. Color had a big first half, 14 of Kansas' 28 points. Watch the way Marquette negotiates screen. Great job to reverse the ball. And it is so hard. If you're going to try to play on top of Hunter Dickinson, they're just going to reverse it and look inside. But Marquette does not get screened. They fight through every screen. And really you, impressive. You talked, Jay, about the angle of the entry pass, and that was a perfect angle into Dickinson right there on the color feed. Iguodaro with the answer. Jackson, very talented freshman in the starting lineup for Kansas. Now they go inside to K.J. Adams for a bucket. And they can play high-low with Dickinson up top because he can see over defenders, and he's such a good passer. Jones, out of bounds. We've seen that a lot in some of these games here at the Stan Sheriff Center in Honolulu. One of the reasons, I believe, is because the players are spacing to the NBA line, that black line, which gives them a lot less room, instead of the white line, which is the college three. Should all be the same. <laughs> what a play by Iguodaro. Iguodaro with another rejection, his third. Marquette in transition, and Ross is fouled. Some NFL team might want to get Iguodaro to just stand behind a field goal kicker. His timing is so good, he took that lob pass out of the air. Dewan Harris just picked up his third foul less than two minutes into the second half. It looks like Bill Self is going to trust him and leave him. Chase Ross was just asked to tuck his shirt and he tucked the front part in. And it makes me think of those great uniforms that Marquette had back in the 70s that Bo Ellis designed. And the lead back to 10. 
Look at the disparity in the free throws. Kansas only got there four times in the first half, and they didn't hit any of them. Well, Dickinson was open inside with Igadoro on his hip. But Kansas just can't see. It's difficult to see in with the pressure. Good pass. And another good pass. But Harris misses the three. McCullough saves it, but into the hands of Jones. That might have benefited Marquette. Oh, what a feed. Are Holick whips me? one right under the rim to Iguodaro. Well, I thought McCullough was out of bounds when he saved that ball, and that might have been helpful to Kansas if it had been called because that gave him an advantage situation. And Holick, what a, what a delivery. He comes in averaging almost six assists per game. That's the fourth he has in this one. But Kansas has no flow. That was not a good shot. I mean, it's a shot that Jackson can make. It just wasn't the right time to take it. Bullock underneath the rim, keeps the dribble alive. Right now, Marquette is making the passes they want, but Kansas can't do it on the other end. Wow. Chase Ross with a deep three. Timeout, Kansas. There's more. He takes being a playmaker very serious. While we were at their practice just the other day, Kolick had one of the staff members breaking down every single pass he had coming off the high post. He said, I had a turnover in a situation where I didn't connect. He said, I wanted to make sure there was better. It was in that play. He said, I will make sure that I connect on every single dime. He loves making his teammates better, guys. And he does a great job of it. Thank you, Angel. A miss from beyond the arc by Dickinson. He gets his own. Murphy's open for three, and he misses it. Marquette is just flying around. Now, it may not be perfect every rotation, but they're playing so hard, they're just fixing it. This is impressive to watch. Now, Stevie Mitchell staying with Kevin McCuller. They go in and double the post. Oso Iguodaro gets out to Hunter Dickinson to pressure the shot. And then when the rebound is coming off, they're flying to the ball. Pollock trying to back down Harris, draws a crowd. Mitchell baseline for the reverse. They give credit to Tyler Pollock with the back down and finding a guy in the corner and hooking that ball around. Well, this has been a clinic. But it's really been the defense that set everything up. It's not like the 49 points is doing it. It's the defense that's been incredible. 9-0 run, Marquette. Got the switch. Harris, no. Murphy kept it alive and comes out of there with it. Well, you can see Kansas just sped up in everything they're doing. McCuller working hard and a chance for three. Not sure where they got Kolek. Individually and collectively. And right now, Dan, for Kansas... Kevin McCullough's got 16 points. Hunter Dickinson's got nine. And Hunter Dickinson hasn't touched the ball in the scoring area in a long time. Where does Kansas go for point production? Harris is just one for seven. K.J. Adams has only attempted two shots in this game. And Kansas also 0 for 5 from the free throw line. That is a great look, a great cut. And a pretty basket by the Jayhawks. Well, Kansas came down, got the ball inside to K.J. Adams, and he had a size advantage. But Johnny Furphy with a really nice cut to get open. Iguodaro comes out, finds Cam Jones. But he's got to give it back up, get it back, take the three. One thing that Marquette does not want is loose possessions on the offensive end. They've got this 13-point lead. Their defense has been fantastic. But you can't get loose with possessions. Adams guarded by Iguodaro. Great job reaching around Dickinson by Mitchell coming up with a deflection. Well, Stevie Mitchell would not let Hunter Dickinson get into his body. Broke contact, got around in front, got the steal. And yet another turnover for Kansas. I think it'd be Hunter Dickinson with a discard on Chase Ross.
job to run McCullough off the three-point line. He tries to get it in, but he's got to throw that ball up. You know, bounce pass into Hunter Dickinson doesn't take advantage of his size and allows a, a guy like Stevie Mitchell to go get and take that ball. Pollock gets open for three. And the rebound for Furphy. Job by Chase Ross to take away that drive. Yeah, it is hard to beat Marquette guys off the dribble. Deflected again, deflected again, and Marquette's got it. Their goal is 32 deflections. Boy, they get three on that one play. <laughs> They've got 10 steals now in this game. And Godaro left it short, wanted a foul call, didn't get it. Well, a tough catch and finish, but just putting pressure on the Kansas defense in the middle. Kansas can't get any penetration into the lane. It's been shut off. And Dickinson having to get a touch further away from the basket than he would like. And another Kansas turnover. Now Kansas, it's easy to say calm down, but when you're getting this kind of pressure, it just speeds everything up. You, know, you think you have to take advantage of this little window because it's going to close off in a second. Or less than a second. Sean Jones, some very good minutes off the bench in the first half. Great ball movement. Jones, the penetration. Cam Jones, wide open. And doesn't get the three ball to go down. Marquette's being allowed to make passes, but for the most part, Kansas is not. And a foul on the Golden Eagles on the inside. A couple of defenders were there on the spin move by K.J. Adams. And they give it to Wigadaro, his first. Yeah, we've seen Marquette miss some open shots, but they've been clean looks. And what was the last time that Kansas had a clean look at any shot in this game? In the Chaminade game yesterday, <laughs> I think, yeah. So, yeah. It's been uh, tough sledding for the moment this one began. Tomorrow night on ESPN and the Abbots, another NBA doubleheader. And what a matchup we've got for you. The Bucks taking on the Celtics in the first game. And the Suns and the Warriors in the second. Coverage tips with NBA countdown at 7 Eastern. Adams a miss. Now, speaking of NBA guys, Tayshawn Prince had a nice long NBA career. He was here doing some scouting. Danny Ainge doing some scouting. First made free throw of the night for Kansas. Jayhawk fans starting to get to their feet, trying to get their team going. Sean Jones with a drive and a finish. Well, that's asking a lot of Johnny Furphy to stay in front of Sean Jones. That's going on to anybody. But what a blow by that was. Adams into traffic. Out of bounds, still Kansas ball. And that's another thing that Oso Iguodaro is really good at, and that's a vertical contest. Now he's not going to be able to get there as a secondary defender to take a charge, but he can come over, jump, and let the offensive player just come into his chest and contest it vertically. Joplin returns. Iguodaro is going to get a rest. Shaka Smart among the most active coaches on the sideline that you will see in college basketball. It's that way in practice, and it's that way during the games as well. McCuller muscles his way in and count it. McCuller just using his strength. Ben Gold into the game, having to take Hunter Dickinson, and Dickinson took him across the lane. And one of the few paint possessions just got right into the chest of Ross and scored over him. We haven't seen much in the paint for Kansas in this game, let alone the second half. Marquette plus 14 in the paint. 34 to 20 in this game. Three-point play for McCullough. He's got 19. Marquette needs to get a little more efficient on the offensive end. He's not going to pitch shutouts all game long. Sean Jones to Chase Ross. Off the leg of Jones and back over to the Jayhawks. <laughs> He's a nice guy, but he is a nice guy. Yeah. I mean, Michigan fans probably don't feel that way right now, and I'm sure other folks around the Big Ten who watched Hunter Dickinson play against them over the last three years, but he is off to a great start with Kansas. 
a chance maybe to shift the momentum a little bit here for the Jayhawks. Get it under 10. Good job by Joplin to front KJ Adams in the post. McCullough up and in. And that's probably the area they can get downhill is from the top. That slot drive. Marquette's got to get something going on the offensive end here. A spin by Sean Jones. And boy, whenever they need a big bucket, it seems he delivers. He's been so good in this game. That's nine points now. His speed is game-changing. David Joplin was sixth man of the year in the Big East a year ago. He's gone into the starting lineup. Sean Jones certainly has a chance at that this year. And there, again, is a great angle, a great feed, and an easy finish for Dickinson. Well, Kevin McCullough comes off to the wing. They get it to him. They empty the backside and just throw right over the top. And if you're fronting Hunter Dickinson, they're going to get you. And a timeout taken by Shaka Smart, it looks like. Can they get Dickinson lots of touches in good spots and let him do his thing? A 1 2 2, three quarter court pressure. And back to a 3 2. Just a little bit of a different look. So that's why Shaka called the timeout, obviously, to change things up, right? Yeah, he could have called it. Could have called it from the bench, but. Shot clock's down to five. They're having to think about some things here. And a turnover by Kansas. A good decision by Shaka Smart to just change things up a little bit. And Bill Self is wondering, where is where is these turnovers come from? But a good, you know, that was an unforced turnover. But because Marquette has sped up with the pressure, sped up this Kansas team, Everything is much more difficult. Great back cut. 17 turnovers committed in 30 minutes by Kansas. Gold again. His second. Well, the, the great back cut by Kolick and then a little pick and pop by Ben Gold, the New Zealander. A foul at the other end. But how about the freshman or the sophomore rather coming off the bench and knocking down two big threes. Well, he hit a big three on ball reversal against Illinois. But just a little pick and pop. Hunter Dickinson tries to give a little help to Kevin McCullough on Sean Jones. He just couldn't recover the goal. Twenty-second point of the night for Kevin McCullough, but it's still an uphill climb here for Kansas. He's really been all of Kansas's offense. Just can't find anybody outside of McCullough and Dickinson to go to. They've only got five field goals from anybody other than McCullough or Dickinson, and it's five different players. No other player on the Jayhawks has more than one made field goal. And look, Marquette is putting so much pressure on Kansas, they're making them make individual plays. Gold turns it over. El Marco Jackson. What a knocked away, but it's still Kansas ball. What a great play by Stevie Mitchell. That back tip just didn't give up on the play, and nobody called out that he was behind. The turnover should have been an advantage situation, and as soon as El Marco Jackson made a hand change to put it to his right hand, Mitchell was able to knock it away. Of all the information Shaka Smart gave us at practice a couple of days ago, the point he wanted... Uh, to make more than anything else what he's proudest of Stevie Mitchell his GPA to be exact Shaka Smart told us three nine five seven He's a double major in finance and information systems and coach smart couldn't be proud another turnover for Kansas Yeah, what class did Mitchell screw up? <laughs> Said he uh, he's gotten an A in every class uh, since one in the first semester of his freshman year Bill Self is frustrated. This is not going the way that he hoped it would go. It's been a long time since Kansas hasn't been able to put the ball in the bucket. Wow. How about about a 15-foot shot put off the glass for Oso Wigadaro? McCullough. And it's Marquette ball. 
And Marquette's guards get to the glass. And that was one to try to keep alive if you could, but inside position, Tyler Kolick had it. Started his career at George Mason, transferred to Marquette. It started out as a 29%, I think it was 29% three-point shooter, and got it up to near 40 last year. And he's coming into this game, he's shooting over 50 from three. Small sample size, but he's continuing to prove as a shooter. Iguodaro into the paint, and he scores over Parker Brown. Just a quick move to get into the middle. Brown flying in, can't finish it. Joplin has it, and here they come again. Nigadaro got a piece of that one. Good pass. Mitchell. Well, even the misses, the quality of shot Marquette's getting is much higher in general than the quality of shot Kansas is getting. No question. Harris never even looked at the bucket, and he can shoot from out there. A foul on Joplin. To the latest CFP ranking. Certainly a lot to talk about uh, from the Maui Invitational again taking place this year here in Honolulu and the Marquette Golden Eagles. What a story uh, they are producing right now with a big lead over Kansas and under eight minutes to go. But Kansas ran a great play out of the timeout to get the ball to KJ Adams along the baseline. That inside position just couldn't get it to go down. Nearly a steal by McCuller. Iguodaro and Timberlake fouled by Mitchell. Well, it's been so impressive about this performance by Marquette thus far is Kansas is really good. <laughs> I mean, this is a yeah. an outstanding team. I mean, you saw what they did to, to Kentucky in the Champions Classic, where you know, Hunter Dickinson had 27 points, 21 rebounds. Kevin McCuller had a Triple double and Dewan Harris had 23 points, knocked down five threes. And to this point in the game, they've only got 46 points. I mean, you know, Kansas is only shooting, they're shooting like 45% for the game, but they've turned it over 18 times to Marquette's nine. And they've also allowed 11 offensive rebounds. To Marquette as well as you talked about they're not a very big team but Marquette more than compensates for the lack of height they've got in so many other different ways Top of the hatch. Hatch. yep and it rolls in for Igadaro they just make so many plays getting into the lane they they're getting into the lane drawing help and then playing off of it and that's usually what Kansas does to other people they want to get downhill and force help but they haven't been able to get into the lane in this game. 42 paint points for Marquette to 24 for Kansas. A much needed three for Kansas, courtesy of Nicholas Timberlake. Jones fumbles it, gets it back. Still plenty of time. And now the quarterback in Kohler. It won't go. Contact underneath and a Kansas foul. Wow. KJ Adams. This looks like a rebound. And how about Tyler Kolick able to execute it? This is a Villanova S backdown. Jalen Brunson was so good at that. Jones can't get rid of McCullough, one of the best defenders in the country. Pollock launches and leaves it well short, and it's back to Kansas. And not a very good offensive possession for Marquette, but one of the best defensive stands we've seen Kansas make. Now Hunter Dickinson coming back into the ball game, and Igadaro. First, we're going to see the one, two, two, three quarter court pressure. Last time they did this out of a timeout, they dropped back to a little three, two zone. But they can certainly go man out of this as well. Just to slow them down a little bit. Yeah, they're back into the three, two. But they can go man out of this at the end of a possession. 
which they have now. Dickinson back to Harris, 10 to shoot. Harris on the drive, the kick, Timberlake wide open. And Ross has it for the Golden Eagles. Not going to see Marquette take the air out of it, but they'll just be a little bit more deliberate. The clock's their friend right now with a 14-point lead. Ross with a good look. Tipped out by Igadaro. Batted around, and it's Kansas ball. Oh, what a smart play by Igadaro. Can't grab the rebound, just tip it out. Jamari McDowell getting some minutes here for Kansas. McCullough got tied up and fouled. By Big point of emphasis, yeah. free throw line. Kansas is not getting there and when they get there they haven't made any. Six for 13 on the night. Still time. Just over five minutes to go but it's a 13 point deficit and it's going to require consecutive stops. Kola turns the corner. No look pass. Mitchell in the corner. Misses the three. Good pass ahead. Timberlake quickly down the court. Can't lay it in. There's some late pressure and Timberlake couldn't finish it. That, that's a gut punch for Kansas. And that is as well. Boy, a four-point turnaround on that play. And you could feel the air come out. Igadaro able to get to the basket easily. Good fake. McDowell short. Still loose. McCullough short. Igadaro wraps up his ninth rebound of the game. Well, he's been tremendous. But it has been a, a team effort. It's not like it's been just one or two guys. You've had contributions up and down the roster for the players that have been on the floor. Two threes by Ben Gold. Great minutes off the bench by Sean Jones. Can't pick up your dribble there. And Dickinson foul. Just 3.35 to go here. And this word of the interview with Angel at the end of the half. He talked about the connectedness of this team and they do all kinds of team bonding activities and a lot of teams do they're not alone in this but there does seem to be a great togetherness but Shaka told us they do things like they go strawberry picking they have a poker night some of the things they do are with the coaches some of the things are just with the players whatever it is there's a real strong culture about this group I would have been down with poker night I'm not sure I would have enjoyed strawberry picking with coach Day but the they did a cooking class as yeah. well they do things yeah. that are totally unrelated and outside of basketball Jones kicks it back out to Cam Jones. And he'll lay it in. Just a strong spin move. He's got a lot in that offensive back, but he didn't really force anything. I mean, he's had a really good game. Another deflection. It's so disruptive. McDowell with a nice look into Harris. Under three minutes to go. 13-point lead, Marquette. Kansas with the full court pressure, but so many ball handlers on the floor and speed for Marquette. Difficult to corral this group. And they're not forcing anything. Ooh, boy, Igadaro had a dunk if he could have caught it cleanly. That was the easiest one they had. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they needed to be tougher. You know, Kansas can get a score, a stop, and a score. And then maybe a little bit of game pressure on Marquette. You know, it seems like Marquette's been in control. And with a 13-point lead, you'd have to say they are. But with the three-point shot. Well, Jay, Bill Self may already be thinking about tomorrow. He took Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCullough Jr. out of the game. And Dewan Harris is out of the game as well. He's taking his top three players out of the game. So he is thinking about tomorrow and what increasingly looks like a matchup with Tennessee in the third place game. Marquette 
inching closer to a, a spot of the championship game against Purdue. And Marquette now should just take their time. No reason to be in a hurry. Bullock always probing. Now Ross hesitates and draws the foul. And he's got the roll and the hook pass on that essentially roll replace action. He's just got a great feel for pick and roll. He doesn't blast off it. He plays angles really well. Tyler Kolick is in complete control of what's going on on the floor. It doesn't mean he's not going to have a turnover here and there because he he takes risks, but you know, Shaka Smart talks about having approach goals instead of avoidance goals. It's not that you're trying to avoid a turnover. You know, it's a, an approach goal of making the right play. And they'll take risks. So they just don't want to be reckless, and they're not. Both Joneses out of the game. Cam and Sean with under two minutes to go. Joplin will return and Ross will leave. Well, it's impressive the way Marquette has developed its players over the last couple of years under Shaka Smart and his staff. And these players have gotten better. Stevie Mitchell, better. Chase Ross, yeah. and key contributors in this game. A three for Furphy. And Shaka wants to be loyal to these players who are in the program. He doesn't want to take any transfers. They don't have any transfers coming in this year. Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, they're tough decisions to make. And boy, Furphy knocking down that shot. He's going to be really good. Yeah. Give me a quick thought. A minute 15 to go. 12-point game. Zach Eady and Purdue against what you've seen from Marquette here tonight. Well, it's a contrast in styles, obviously. But even though Marquette is smaller, they can cause Zach Eady some problems. They're just going to have to decide. It's going to be difficult for Purdue at times to get vision in. Uh, but can they rebound? That's going to be the key. Can they rebound? And then can Purdue take care of the ball? Purdue had a, a number of turnovers. They had a lot yeah. of 16 turnovers, maybe 17 against uh, Tennessee. And Tennessee's a different kind of defensive team. They're much bigger and ultra physical. But this is a, a quicker team that puts on relentless pressure. They can switch. And they, they're going to look to speed Purdue up just like they did with Kansas. Stevie Mitchell gets a nice ovation. One by one, Shaka Smart taking his starters out of the game. And now he's going to take Oso Iguodaro out, and he'll get an even bigger ovation with the kind of day that he has had here. 21 points, 9 rebounds. Heck of a game for Oso Iguodaro. Boy, it doesn't matter who's in the game. The swarming pressure is the same, isn't it? They're going to keep playing hard. Yep. Cola. Just a little bit beyond the reach of Trey Norman. Time now for the play of the game. Brought to you by Tommy Bahama. And also Iguodaro, as you said, he did so many things to help this team win. Well, he had 13 points and 8 rebounds against Illinois. In their first game against UCLA, he had 14 points. And then he comes up with 21 in this one. And he really did everything. And Shaka Smart calls him the anchor of their defense. So how about Kansas and Tennessee in a third place game? That's how loaded this tournament is. Another deflection. I wonder what the number is. So, so that means with the win tonight... Marquette's going to get milkshakes. <laughs> you know, they get milkshakes after they win. All I can think of is Daniel Day-Lewis. I think our producer, Eric Mosley, should get us milkshakes after we do a good job. I agree. Yeah. Well, he's probably saying we'd have to do yeah, that. He says we haven't lived up to that yet. 14-point lead, standing O from the Marquette fans. And a great day of basketball comes to a close here in Honolulu, but there's going to be another great one coming tomorrow. Tennessee and Kansas will meet at...